As soon as I told you guys we had booked flights to come to Melbourne in September, we had floods of ideas and suggestions of things to do and places to go. And one of them was Healesville Sanctuary. So I found a video of virtual tour. So let's check it out. G'day, I'm Darren. Welcome to Healesville Sanctuary. Let's go take a tour of the sanctuary together. Serious question right from the start, and this isn't derogatory to anyone or trying to be rude, but what is the difference between a sanctuary and a zoo? If anyone can tell me, because I'm not sure if there is any difference, but there, there probably is. Genuine question. I wonder what awesome creatures they have in here. The I emu. Drum. I Blinky. Now a lot of people do ask me, why is drum called drum? Well, here's why. <laughs> wow. Welcome to Koala Forest. Hey, Dindy. How you doing? This is Murrin Dindy. He's one of our male koalas here. Fast asleep, doing what a koala does best. What the hell is... Well, I didn't know a koala made that noise. Straight away, right from the start, there are three animals. You know, you, you may occasionally see an emu in a, in a UK zoo. But echidnas, koalas, you wouldn't. So straight away, it's completely different animals. <laughs> What is that noise? Welcome to Kangaroo Country. In Australia, why do kangaroos need to be in a sanctuary? Isn't there lots of them? I'm sure there's a lot of kangaroos that do they need to be in a sanctuary? Because surely a sanctuary is a place to look after animals and, and to make sure that they don't, uh, there's no harm done to them and, and whatnot. Is that, is that, that's correct, isn't it? So why would a kangaroo need to be in a sanctuary? They're not, they're not endangered or anything, are they? I'm sorry if I sound ignorant. I, I, I said this in the very first Australia video I did, the 50 things about Australia. And I said, look, I don't mean to be ignorant. This is genuinely, me finding out what sort of animals would be in this sanctuary, if it's a good place to go to, um, and look at the differences of what sort of animals are in this sanctuary compared to, you know, a, a UK zoo, for example. Uh, and actually just asking a little bit more about the species that you guys, some of you may have been here, so you may know more knowledge about these animals than I do. They're so cool. It's just weird because we, so within this exhibit, Don't have anything we've got like two it. species of kangaroo and a species of wallaby. So we've got the red kangaroos, largest kangaroo in the world, and the kangaroo island kangaroos. We've also got a small wallaby species as well, called palmer wallabies. Those wallabies, I need to go back a little bit. Those wallabies look a little, little bit more ratty, don't they? A little bit more mousy and ratty. Uh, we obviously don't get kangaroos in zoos over here. However, I've said this before, we do get wallabies. Uh, the closest zoo to us, which is very popular, is Marwell Zoo uh, in Bishop's Wartham, Eastley Way, near where I live. Uh, and they've got a little bit where you can walk in and the wallabies are there. Uh, so what I wonder why we've got wallabies. Why are wallabies okay in the UK, in our zoos, but not kangaroos? And yeah, exactly the same. You just walk around and they're in the environment while you're walking. They're not sort of penned in or as much. Sorry, did that say that's a tree kangaroo? Wow, look at the look at the tail along the <laughs> casual scratch of his ass. Wow, they are look you can completely see the sort of the, the the nose look the nose of the of the kangaroo and 
wow, I've not seen it. I have not. I'm amazed by kangaroos and wallabies, but I've not seen anything like that. I don't think. They look so like a real mix of so many different creatures. Wow, they've got that sort of possumy monkey ta long tail to keep them in the trees. They're so fluffy. In this aviary, we've got two of Victoria's most endangered bird species. It's really amazing, this aviary. It's, one, it's actually a push. I think with birds like this, now I'm not a huge fan of birds. I've made that clear. Um, and I think, fair, you know, just because I don't like birds, not make me a bad person. However, watching birds like this, and, and you see you see the bloke there just, just looking up at them, they are sort of mesmerizing, aren't they? They, they are <sighs> fascinating to watch. You know, they're relaxing, as long as they're not squawking. But they are pretty birds. Oh yeah, show me some platypuses, please. This is our wildlife hospital in here where a lot of important work happens, not just with our animals, but with wildlife that may be injured. You can actually see operations as they happen. It's really fascinating. Oh, well, that might mean sometimes I get a bit queasy just watching uh, hospital programs on TV. Well, that might be a tough one. But that is, I actually, I tell you what though, I think that is a brilliant idea to allow people to watch these these treatments going ahead, these operations, because it aids in people's learning uh, and their understanding of, of these animals. I think it's a fantastic idea to allow people to watch. They like all like all these Australian animals like scratching their backsides, don't they? Come on, I want to see a platypus. Oh wow, they're all It's all in a cave type thing. So strange, aren't they? A mix between beavers and ducks. They look very flat. When they're on the water, they look very flat. This is another beautiful walkthrough exhibit. You get to see some local wallaby species, an endangered brush-tail rock wallaby, and some beautiful birds. <laughs> Do you know what? It's, it's funny because obviously everyone knows, and I'm sure, you know, all Australians know that Australia is seen as being a dangerous place with animals. But actually, look at all these. <laughs> look how cute and sweet they look. Maybe you need to try and change your uh, you, the perception people have of having all these violent, dangerous, killing machine animals to cute and cuddly. Maybe that's a, I don't know, maybe that's a better idea. Unless you really do just want to keep people out. <laughs> wow, look at the colours. <laughs> wow. 
that. That is that was a vibrant blue back there, wasn't it? See, that's too close to being a rat and a mouse. I'm not a fan of rats or mice. Size of those ears! Look at that. They don't look vicious, do they? They don't look like the Tasmanian Devil cartoon. What I like about this, actually, when you go to a zoo, you know, you've got all the all the all the cages set up and they're all separate. And, you know, this, let's be honest, they're still in cages. It's but it's for the for the tourist coming to see. It's very it looks a lot more natural, doesn't it? With all the foliage and, and um, it, the cages, as I said, they're not as obvious. But they are still in cages. But it's a much nicer, natural feel. But maybe that leads you into a thinking of it as being something better than it is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay thanks. Less of the spot, less of the snakes and reptiles thanks wow you see just com more or less completely black and just the orange wow the vi uh, see see this is what i'm talking about birds like i said i am not a huge fan of birds the beady eyes and the, and the beaks. Uh, but you've got to enjoy the beauty of, of those vibrant colours. You know, for example, it's complete black and then the burst of orange. And then you've got the oranges, the greens, and fantastic colours. So this is Sam, one of our red-tailed black cockatoos. You're a good boy, thanks for coming. <laughs> nice hair, do. Isn't it the the Australian eagle is the is the bold eagle, right? And the um, the American one is the golden eagle. Or is it the other way around? But the American one, which is actually their sort of symbol, isn't as big as isn't as big as the Australian one, right? Pretty sure. I may have got them mixed up: bold eagle and and golden eagle. You get the idea. What is that bird? Someone tell me, quick, what is that bird? See, this is the amazing thing, right? And th this is th this is what's amazing about learning learning things. But a lot of these animals, yeah, we get some of them in, in the UK, and, or, or we got them in our zoos. And but there's certain animals in the UK that are sort of just normal to us. 
They're normal to us. And then you look outside into other countries and it is, it is a world of difference. It might be a different planet. It might as well be. But then for you guys, these sort of animals are completely normal. You know, this is what you know. And, but what you may see in other countries is completely different, you know, and so it's the kind of opposite we've got. But what is this? What is this bird? Because I wouldn't be able to tell you. I, I... Surely that's just a duck. <laughs> Surely it's just a Thing goes. So we've recently looked at a story about dingoes, you know, and, and uh, out in the outback. But these are gorgeous. I think dingoes is the wrong name for something that could be quite vicious, from what I'm, I hear. Uh, th these are majestic creatures. I think dingo is is almost um, belittling, almost because look at the, look how handsome this this boy or girl is. They are gorgeous animals. Might do your head in with all the howling though. Thank you so much for joining us on this small little Hillsville Sanctuary tour. There's so much more to see and I'm so sorry that we're closed at the moment, but we really look forward to welcoming you back with open arms and open paws. So thanks again for all your ongoing support. So I assume they did this video because of obviously all the lockdowns and people couldn't come and visit and it's a way of making sure people realise that they are still there. Um, it's it looks a lovely place it really does look like a lovely place and this guy clearly they care but you know i go back to my question still so you know please answer this if you can what is the difference between a sanctuary and a zoo um it's amazing because a lot of those creatures i either don't know what they are or i wouldn't have known what they were before doing a lot of youtube videos on australia and I think that that's that just shows how far apart places like the UK and Australia are. And actually, you could say Australia to the rest of the world because there are so many creatures and you know so many creatures that so many people would not have a clue about. It looks an amazing place. We'll see. We will see. Um, yeah, there's a lot of questions I put towards you guys. So amazing if you answer thank you so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe we've got merchandise down below as well for australia and europe and i'll catch you next time